say they're not going to wait for the government to disclose what it knows or doesn't know about UAPs. You may m more commonly call them UFOs. This new group is called the Soul Foundation, and it wants to study the phenomenon using hard data and begin outlining pathways forward for research and how to harness the non-human technology they fervently believe exists. The group includes many familiar faces we've had on the show, like Dr. Avi Loeb, the Harvard professor who claims to have found proof of non-human technology at the bottom of the ocean, and Leslie Keene, the journalist who helped break the David Grush story. The group also includes the man we introduced you to last night, Tim Galliadet. He is a former Navy admiral and scientist who believes there is a military UFO cover-up. Well, tonight we introduce you to the man who's leading this group, Dr. Gary Nolan. He talked exclusively with News Nation special correspondent, Ross Coltart. You're pretty upfront about this. I know you have been with me in the past. You think there is something real out there and it's non-human. You know, the circumstantial evidence basically has me uh, convinced that it's well worth my time to spend looking at it. Dr. Gary Nolan is a world-renowned immunologist, a professor of pathology at Stanford and a biotech entrepreneur. His breakthrough biotechnology gene therapy discoveries around cancer are used around the world. He's also the head of the Soul Foundation, which just announced a new initiative for UFO research and policy. The statement of intent for Soul is that you aspire to be a serious, well-funded, cutting-edge academic research into the nature of UAP and their broad cosmological and political implications. How do you do that, though, with something like UAPs, which is so intangible? Where do you start? You categorize first what the questions are that you want to ask. Once we've put all of the data into the right categories, we then say, okay, well, what of this meets academic standards and criteria of excellence? In the same way, military pilots testified to Congress that they felt discouraged from reporting unexplained sightings, be they alien or otherwise. Nolan says that same stigma exists in the scientific community. There's plenty of people who I talk to behind the scenes who are academics, you know, uh, mainstream academics. They just don't want to talk about it yet because they feel that the stigma is still too high. And Nolan says he believes researchers, not the government, will have to spearhead the effort to explain UFOs in ways all of us can understand. There's something that they're trying to hide, right? And you have the people who've come from within the government who've said it, that it's, it's real. And then you have the government twisting itself into pretzels to try to not uh, admit what's going on. You, you can't wait for daddy government to tell you what you think you already know. They don't need to give you permission to move forward. But why we do need government is that, frankly, you still need the funding structures, right? So how is it that we create an incentive, both for the people on the inside, as well as the government to release the information. I mean, the, the incentive shouldn't be we're all at the doors with pitchforks, right? The incentive should be that this is going to help uh, the country in some way. There's an opportunity right now, isn't mm -hmm. there? If they're real, mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the potentials for humanity that come out of that? I look at this and say, well, there's somebody smarter than us. And so I don't think that I'm going to have an anti-gravity craft, you know, before the end of my existence. But what I do see is a new way, perhaps, to think about the universe. Uh, and so I look at that as an opportunity for, to learn from somebody who's more intelligent. You... It's, it's simple as that. All right, News Nation special correspondent Ross Coulthard joins us now. Ross, it's fascinating, but I'm still unclear what it is exactly they're going to be studying. Essentially, they're interested in rigorous research into the entire phenomenon of UAPs. And it's such a broad subject, it's very hard to encapsulate in a single sentence. I mean, we know that there are phenomena that is physical, that is manifesting itself in our skies, orbit, oceans. And what they're interested in doing is rigorous, tough, empirical, scientific research that analyzes this. And we're at a starting point. I think the, the thing that I find interesting about this, Elizabeth, is normally when you're in a room full of people, 
everybody's basically still umming and ahhing about mm -hmm. whether this is a real subject that's worthy of engagement. Not anymore. What really struck me, what really struck me about the Seoul Foundation event that I felt very privileged to be a part of was that in the audience there were people from Defence Aerospace, people from certain three-letter agencies, people from a broad range of parts of government and private industry. And there was a willingness and an intention to start taking this phenomenon seriously. Science has decided that if the government's not going to do the work publicly, they are. And so I think what this was was essentially a policy platform, the mm -hmm. beginning of an initiative to start taking this issue seriously. And what they're going to investigate, they're going to work out as they go along. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Ross Coltart, good to have you on the show again tonight. Thanks. Pleasure.